the fact that you clicked on this video means I didn't run you off with the first one and I'd like to apologize for that. I was coming from a very dark place. But yeah, so this time around we're gonna talk about the culture shock aspect of things and the fact that nobody told me. So if you are Jamaican, chances are you've known somebody that has been to Canada or you grew up with uh, an idea of what Canada is. Now, my grandfather used to travel and basically the one thing one me remember about Canada is that a Canada ground clean, like you can walk and eat off of the streets in Canada. I don't know if at the time when those people were traveling, that's what used to happen, but cigarette butt alone, a choke way up here. But now that we've gotten that out of the way, it is structured. There, you could be standing in the grocery store and when you look around, like there's a whole line behind you because people are that orderly. Them don't say you're not in that line. Them are going to line up. Now, like, there are things that we as Jamaicans learn that we have to unlearn when you intend to succeed while walking the straight and narrow here in, in um, Canada. Because in terms of learned behavior, the things that we grow up doing, I'm, I'm, so I got my wisdom teeth out and I try to do this, but no, no. It doesn't hurt. Me just aware, and me now I push my tongue too far. <laughs> They will say their story and they will tell you, oh, you can go ahead before me and stuff like that. But when being nice will inconvenience them, then they're not very nice. So you need to do your part to not inconvenience them. <laughs> yeah, for true. Like, all right. I'm going to put this now. Last night, I was on my way home and this lady, she she was walking funny. I encountered her before and me did not avoid her. And she was walking, she got to the steps. She was, I don't know, under the influence of what, but she was staggering. And she climbed up on the step and backside. She climbed up on the step. There was this lady sitting in front of the stairs and basically telling her that there is space for her to walk. But the lady got obviously hindered and like just move. You know? Anyways, the woman did the entry, sir, and then the woman dropped back to the head. And I was on the phone with my mom. And like the people them just a walk with star. I don't know. Like, you see, oh, we grew up in a Jamaica, we know say, oh, we're not too, we stay to ourselves and we're not inner people sometimes or whatever. That would never happen in Jamaica and people walk away. All if it's a drunk man, whatever they cuss people and a regular in turnover. Somebody are gonna come to him here. They're gonna say, Yo, you see what me tell you, or stuff like that. Like, me not understand how that happened. And, like, me literally, me literally have to tell my mother, say, Yo, mommy, me soon call her back and call the police. Me, me call um, 911, and then uh, they might instruct me to forget something. And, like, even the people, because we walked past people when we were coming in, we walked past people when we were coming in, and they were like, Oh, her, like, and I'm like, she's bleeding like she's flat on her back she's bleeding off her head and 
am so hesitant. Like, I got so angry. I was crying so hard because it was terrifying to see that she was perfectly fine one minute and then her head was running blood all over the place another minute. And I'm like, Jamaicans don't do this. <laughs> Then we help you. Like, all if them not like you. If you drop down the road, people are gonna help you. Yo, like, we just pray and say, God guide me steps that me not go through none of that. Like, me not know. Me, I'm like, please don't make me drop down because then people are gonna walk past me. And it was, it was terrifying. I'm, Still a bit shaking up about it. My, my come home and make me brush out my finger them, me brush them, me brush them, me brush them, me brush them till them them start lose color. And yeah, Canadians are nice, but they're not that nice. And it's it's a few occasions where I see stuff happen that they don't step up. They're nice in the smile and. But other than that, like, me not convinced, me not convinced. But enough about that. So, a lot of us, when we, did, when we decided to migrate, inform other people about it. And one of the recommendations that I got a lot was, when we come here, I must find a white man. No, you're very disrespectful to a culture, to, to everything. I am not saying that all avenues are closed, but telling me that if I come to Canada, I must carry one more white man or I must bring on mixed babies is very disrespectful. Like, why would you do that? You know? You didn't breed for white man. But when you think about it, not even white people now find white people married. Toronto, um, I, I'm not sure. I think it's Toronto, but could be Ontario at large. Um, 51% immigrants. That means say uh, more than half of who live in Albania, no come from here, no, no native to the land. Like, immigrants like india china different countries in africa um the caribbean kind of found a day here um like everywhere it's it's such a melting pot off and this leads to my next point where i put in the work to learn french yeah i do enough things to learn french conversations i did a course at UTEC, you know, things like that. And yeah, French kinda not help me much. <laughs> French is good to know, but everything, every label, every sign is in um, French and English here in Ontario. I know that French Canada is more towards your signs have to be like 70 something percent French. Or, like. I don't know that don't quote me on that but here in Ontario like even the Canadians don't know French they can read it a lot of them learned some of it in in school but now the fact that we don't use it on a daily it's not that important what I do recommend however is when you come here um, the the community that you're in the workplace that you're in um, get to know the people that you work with and their background so you learn little statements in their language now when I tell if you got eavesdrop on the people them conversation or learn if you know when they might chat you but me I did one of them wa learn to say what you just say just to make you feel so me understand so you just say something and that was a bad move because here comes one of the main things that us as Jamaicans do that we kind of shouldn't. Woo! 
we look on people and just give them a nationality. You can't come here and call the people then Mr. Chin or Mr. Lee or Chinese man because we don't know where they come from. You literally look at people and name them based on their supposed nationality. And they have news for you. <laughs> Take it from me that learned the hard way, don't do it. No, if somebody looks at you and asks you, what do you think my background is? Don't answer. Don't answer. If you're not here, they say one complete Jamaican statement, don't even say you're Jamaican. Like, no, do it. Do not ask the people, do not. Do not. You ask them. Ask them what's your background. But do not ask them, are you Chinese? Or are you, you know? Don't do it. Like, even if you have an idea, keep the idea and let them tell you. Don't ask it. But if you need them to confirm, say, what's your background? Or what language was that? You know? Something like that. Don't, don't call the people them certain name. <laughs> I don't call them coolie man. Like these terminologies, we we are Jamaican. We're out of many one people. We're a whole melting pot of cultures. But in Toronto, think of think of Toronto as um, if you watch the originals, think of Toronto as New Orleans in 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 that setting. We are you have the witches over there, so. The vampire this or the werewolves this or the, the, the original this or the local this or the tourist this or you understand like they all coexist and try to and there are times when there is a rift but apart from that the unity is just not there like that like oh you can't go to Jamaica go call people certain things you can't do it up here and it comes to my main point, ladies and gentlemen. The homophobia that we were taught. We grew up learning that homophobia is a way of life that we should live by. And we have news for you. Yeah, I feel like I'm learning that. No. Nobody never come in, never tell her, nobody never invite her here to become something that you are not. But in the most, um, insert word here, please, ladies and gentlemen, be rest, be respectful. Be respectful of somebody's um, personality, their sexuality, their like. Respect you. Don't be that person. Don't be that guy. It is. It's very sad. It's very sad. Because of your because of how we were taught because it was a it was a learned um behavior i was taught that i grew up in that in that setting and this is where now when you are thinking about coming here you start to condition your mind to forget those things to acknowledge when you say those things or when you think those thoughts or when you act upon those thoughts to dial back because baby girl baby boy no, it's not accepted. It is, there's penalties to it. You can't get fined, you can't lose your job, you can't get blacklisted, and trust me, the opportunities are already so limited that when you mess up, you mess up. So, you have to go unlearn them there. No, for some of we, <laughs> with the fears the um the tell all fierce we kind of have it 
Me not know. Me not know. Me really not know. Somehow we just... We just have the face. When you know, approve of something, it just stamp on your face. And... I don't know how to combat that. Leave it in the comments if you if you know, cause me still not master it, but I'm learning. I'm I'm trying my best to not react to certain things because, yo, remember say, people here are more free to express themselves than we are in Jamaica, and the look on our faces when we see something that is not. To our standard it is very hurtful to other people like Bill man <laughs> Bill you need to condition your face condition your face and the outbursts they, they quick fit tell people your mind and the quick fit say what come on your mind no, one of my main things last year that I had to unlearn was addressing a older Jamaican person as Miss. Now, sir, in my vocabulary, and it can't change. Like everybody named sir, and I had this issue with my boss too when I was talking to him, and I'm like, sir, you know, and but we were on that um level where i thought that it was okay but he took offense to it and i had to unlearn saying that to him but i still call p i call my male friends on a regular day sir you know and it was something and then you did have miss Ma no i called her miss on my first day my first week even and she gave me hell and then when i made a complaint at the end of my first week of training i'm like this woman really have it out for me the boss spoke to her so now me can't bother call her miss now after a whole week of calling her miss just one week you know it take me about two weeks for no call or miss. And we are going to encounter that, especially when somebody tells us the pronouns that they would like to be addressed using. And it's okay. Everybody doesn't get it the same day. But try. Just try. Just show that you're putting in the effort to try because if you're there and every time you have a conversation you're like but he was this or him this and the person's like i'm she i'm her address me as such and you're like oh i'm very sorry and and you you insert the the pronouns that they ask for it, that's better but being that them you know like we have that little something there and it not gonna get we very far. Oh, we need to cut the yard. Now, there's this thing that us as Jamaicans grow up with, myself included, being that we are Jamaicans and we dominate the world with we look self and you know how we run things. I don't ask nobody to change because I don't change that for the world. I am a sap dog. But, you see the part where we learn, say, yo, everywhere in our world, them love we as Jamaicans. You can stick a pin right there, so. Because, they love the Jamaican culture. They appropriate it. Right now, if you search up Toronto slangs, yeah, fancy. I just regular everyday Jamaican words. <laughs> um, yeah, them love the culture. Them love the. Are you gonna learn that? No, are you gonna learn it the hard way? Them love the culture. Them love we. Because 
we go on like we own everything and we know everything and we being and we ban and we dominate the classroom and the workspace and every other industry so um yeah them are going here for cool and flame them are going here for dim your light don't do it do not do it there is so much here that came as a shock to me because me grew up with a notion of what Canada is me grew up in a community where I had Canadians come down in the winter time and, and spend um, X amount of time I had Canadians build houses in my community I had people from my community migrate to Canada that I was still in touch with I have family members that live in Canada and these are things that you know you feel like because canada doesn't have the stigma attached to it like america does canada best place on earth and everywhere in everywhere in the world that you go you're gonna encounter different um things but just come the, the the whole point of this video is so you come here with an open mind these are all my experiences these are what i have when so these are things that i have experienced these are things that i have come to understand you might have a different experience than i did but the one thing that i want you to know is to come here with an open mind an open understanding that hey a lot of things aren't gonna go my way i'm gonna push through a lot of people aren't gonna see life the way i see it i'm gonna push through and if you have that mentality there from jump like you're already three steps ahead so just work on your little facial expressions and unlearn homophobia and yeah come with a bank book because the next video is about moolah and yeah i'll talk to you guys later bye